Enthalpy is a measure of the heat gained or released during a chemical reaction. Specifically, the heat will be transferred between the chemical reaction, which we call the system, and everything around the system, which we call the surroundings. Heat is going to be moving between the two. So enthalpy is a direct measurement of the heat change of the system, which is pretty tricky because we can't actually measure the heat of the system, but we can measure the heat of the surroundings. This is also kind of tricky because it's everything around the system. And how do you measure the heat of everything? Well, this is where calorimetry comes in. Calorimetry is the science of measuring heat. So we want to measure the heat change of the system, but we can only measure the heat change of the surroundings. So we're going to need some pretty special equipment and a fancy equation to do this. And let's start with the equipment. The equipment we use to measure the heat change of a system is called a calorimeter. And I happen to have one right here. Now this may look like just two styrofoam cups, but this is our special piece of equipment that we're going to use to measure the heat change of a chemical reaction. But first, what are we going to learn in this video? First, we're going to learn how a calorimeter works, and then we're going to learn the equation that's used to calculate the amount of heat transferred during chemical reaction. And then we're going to perform a reaction in our calorimeter and actually calculate the heat that's produced. A calorimeter is basically just an insulated container that's going to hold onto our system and surroundings. Now the surroundings is the tricky thing because it's hard to measure the temperature change of everything. And so we want to limit it to just one substance. And so we fill up our calorimeter with water and we do the reaction. Remember the reaction is the system inside of the water. Why do we use water? Well water is really easy to measure the temperature change of. Now since we're using water inside of our styrofoam cup, we need reactions that will happen inside of water and dissolve in water. So here's a good example of hydrochloric acid that's going to react with sodium hydroxide. These symbols right here, AQ, means that these things are dissolved into water. And so the reaction will take place inside the water. Now the reaction is the system and the water is the surroundings. When measuring the heat change of the system, we are measuring something called enthalpy. That's delta H, the symbol we use. And this symbol right here means the change in enthalpy. Now this is going to be exactly equal to the heat of the system. And we use this symbol Q, and we just put the short for system there afterwards. Remember that this is kind of tricky because we cannot directly measure the heat of the system. We can only measure the heat of the surroundings. So let's just say that we stick our thermometer inside of our calorimeter, we do the reaction, and the temperature of the water increases, it goes up. Well, if the temperature of the water went up, that must mean that some heat went out of the system, which is the reaction, and into the water. So the heat of the system must have gone down. They always have to work opposite of each other. So I can say that the heat of the system is equal to the negative heat of the surroundings because they're working opposite of each other. Now measuring the heat transferred isn't as simple as just measuring the temperature change. Since we are actually measuring the temperature change of water, we need to account for the amount of water in the cup. If there's only a little bit of water, then it's going to be easier to change the temperature than if there was a lot of water. And so we're going to need to measure the mass of water, and we use the symbol M and measure this in units of grams. The other thing we need to take into account is water's ability to change temperature. This is called the specific heat of water, and it's a constant value. And we use the symbol C to describe specific heat, and this is always equal to 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius. What this actually means is it takes 4.18 joules to change the temperature of one gram of water by exactly one degree Celsius. Okay, this finally starts to bring us towards the equation. Now remember, we're actually measuring the heat of the surroundings. And this is going to be equal to the mass of the water times the specific heat of water times the change in temperature. But wait, we actually want the heat of the system. And so I can calculate the heat of the system by remembering that the heat of the system is equal to the negative of the heat of the surrounding. So all I have to do is put a negative sign in front of mc delta t. And this is my equation I'm going to use to calculate the heat change of a system. And some people like to call this the calorimetry equation. Okay, I know that you're dying to ask, what if the reaction doesn't really work well in water? Like, say, burning something. Well, there is a special calorimeter uh, that we can use to do that. It's called a constant volume 
calorimeter or also known as a bomb calorimeter, although it doesn't really have anything to do with an actual bomb. The name bomb calorimeter comes from this reaction vessel right here. And this would be some sort of strong steel container uh, that we can do the reaction in. And what we're doing is burning things. And so the sample would be placed inside of this container and it would be dropped into water and then it would be ignited with some electricity. We still measure the exact same thing. The heat from this reaction would transfer out into the water and we measure how the water changes. And if you really wanted to get fancy, we call our styrofoam cup calorimeter a constant pressure calorimeter because it's open to the elements and so it's just at normal atmospheric pressure. Okay, let's get back to our coffee cup experiment. The reaction that we're going to do inside our calorimeter is the dissolving of calcium chloride in water. The first thing that we have to do is construct our calorimeter. I like to use two cups because it's going to be a little more insulated. And I've also cut out another cup, just half of it off, so that I can have a little top. And I just put a hole through so I can put my thermometer in. Okay, the data that I'm going to gather is going to be the mass of the water and the temperature change of the water. I've already measured out 100 grams of water. I'm going to add that to my calorimeter. And then I'm going to take the initial temperature of it. I'm just going to put my thermometer on and wait a couple minutes. Okay, I gave that a minute just for the temperature to stabilize and we're at about 19 degrees Celsius. Now I can go ahead and add my calcium chloride. This is calcium chloride, it's just a white solid. This is actually one of the salts that is used to melt ice on roads and driveways in the winter. I'm going to go ahead and dump it in and get my top on there really quick. And then I'm just going to mix it up. And it'll probably take a couple minutes for it to completely dissolve. I'm just going to swirl it because you don't want to start with a thermometer. You might break it since it's made of glass. So I've been swirling this for about two minutes. It should be completely dissolved and I'm at 26 degrees. So I increased from 19 degrees up to 26 degrees. Let's go ahead and do the math and find out how much heat this reaction released. So here's all the data from that chemical reaction. I have the mass of the water, which was 100 grams. Here's the specific heat of water. That's a constant. That never changes. It's always 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And here's my change in temperature. When calculating the change in temperature, we always take the final temperature and subtract from that the initial temperature. So I started at 19 degrees and I ended up at 26 degrees for a difference of 7 degrees Celsius. Okay, the equation that I'm going to use is the calorimetry equation. And so now it's just a matter of just plugging everything into the equation and plugging into my calculator. All right, so I have 100 times 4.18 times 7, and I end up with a heat of 2,926 joules. And with a number that big, we usually like to convert that into kilojoules by dividing by 1,000. So we end up with 2.93 kilojoules and that is the heat released during the dissolving of calcium chloride. So did you learn everything that was in this lesson? Well, if you did, you learned that calorimetry is the science of measuring heat. You learned that a calorimeter is a device used to measure heat during a chemical reaction. And you also learned the equation to calculate heat.